Folks, it's colder than an Eskimo's doorbell out here today. This is the Sangyong Muso in Rhino trim, which is long wheelbase only, top of the spec, 2.2 litre diesel with an automatic gearbox, a six speed from ASIM, which is actually brilliant. Now this Muso is one of the few trucks on the market that can actually carry 1.1 tonnes in the back, as well as towing three and a half tonnes at the same time. With nothing in the back, it can tow four and a half tonnes. Although still a very good size, the actual physical dimensions of the low bed in the Muso fall slightly behind some of its rivals. While its styling is as rugged as Mount Everest with a five o'clock shadow. Right folks, so when it comes to the interior, it's a nice place to be. Really good quality leather on the steering wheel, lots of thumb controls. Also got a heated steering wheel, which on a day like today is an absolute godsend. We've got heated seats for driver and passenger, two 12 volt sockets down there and uh, two USB sockets. Physical controls for the air conditioning, which is great. Although the uh, temperature is controlled via buttons rather than a dial, which I would slightly prefer. The screen is very good, really clear, nice colours, nice brightness. It's a tiny bit laggy when you're using Apple CarPlay, but nothing really to speak of. It's a very, very good system and better than you'll find in a lot of road cars. Fairly traditional drive selector here, proper handbrake, couple of cup holders and a large cubby there. Material quality generally is very good. It all feels like it's built for sort of sturdiness rather than for comfort but it's much better than you'll find in some of the car's rivals. Really good visibility for the driver in here, nice big wing mirrors and a brilliant reversing camera, which is at the perfect angle. Uh, it almost shows you the back of the car flat, but with quite a nice wide aspect. And you can actually see the towing eye, which is something that you can't in lots of cars. All in all, a great interior. Sorry about the camera angle, folks. I've just suffered an epic tripod failure. Not a euphemism, by the way. Uh, nice place to be in here. Plenty of leg room and headroom. Uh, heated seats for your rear passengers. Nice big door cubby. Couple of vents down here. And you could easily get three across this back row, meaning that this pickup is suitable for five people to do a couple hundred mile trip without any kind of grumbling coming from anyone. It's great. So, Sangyong Muso, what's it all about? Well, I'm reliably informed that in Korean, Sangyong means double dragon, which is pretty cool, and Muso means rhino. Uh, this one is actually in rhino trim, which is the long wheelbase version. And you'll pick one of these up for about 33 grand plus the VAT. If you prefer something a bit lower spec and with a shorter wheelbase, you can get the EX from 24 plus VAT. Now, the first thing that strikes you when first driving the Muso is that it feels incredibly refined and indeed like the interior is quite refined it feels much more like a car than it does a pickup truck and it doesn't have that sort of agricultural quality that so many of its rivals have one side note to that however is that this being the long wheelbase version it's got leaf springs in the back and coils in the front as you might expect in most pickups and with that setup it gets down the road very nicely even with the bed completely empty in the back. Now I have on a drive day very briefly driven the short wheelbase version which is sprung throughout so it doesn't have the leaf springs at the back it's got coil springs all the way around traditional shock absorbers all the way around. Now that is very bouncy when you've got nothing in the bed and I think it's because those rear springs are set up for probably you having a ton sitting in the load bed. What I can say is the short wheelbase version is quite bouncy when you don't have anything in the back and it's a bit of a fidgety ride, but the long wheelbase version when it's empty uh, is an absolutely brilliant ride. Absolutely no problems with it whatsoever. We've got a really clear driver information display in this, which um, is quite reminiscent of some of the latest driver information displays from some Citroen cars I've been in. So I'd be interested to see if they've raided the parts bin there possibly. So as for the drivetrain, you've got just under 150 brake horsepower from this 2.2 litre diesel, mated to the six speed ASIN automatic gearbox. You've constantly got rear wheel drive power, but you have also got four wheel drive options with high and low ratios. So it's very versatile. In general, the truck feels like it's got all the power you could possibly need. 
And as I said right at the start, it's fantastic for carrying large loads and towing at the same time. Uh, where it does let itself down a little bit is on the MPG. You're only getting about 30 MPG, which is four or five less than quite a few of its rivals. And the insurance group is a whopping 50. So it's right up there in terms of its insurance group. So my two trips a year to B&Q and my one trip a year to Ikea don't really give me any practical need for a pickup. But for some reason, I've always had a soft spot for them. And it's been great to spend a long period of time with one particularly one that drives as well as this. And I have to say, I'd take one of these any day of the week over a Ford Ranger, which you have to think would be one of this car's biggest rivals. But of course, it's not a perfect vehicle, nothing is. Some of its rivals have slightly better MPG figures, slightly lower insurance groups, and slightly larger load bays. But not many of them offer the refinement that you get from this thing. All in all folks, this is an exceptionally good vehicle that gives you bags of practicality and versatility, and it's actually a really nice thing to drive. It's a big thumbs up from me. I'll be gutted to see it go, despite having no real practical use for a pickup truck. Brilliant, brilliant thing. Thanks for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you on the next one.